Hi, this is Professor CC19, and today I am going to be going over our progress in World 2 of Candy Crush Saga, which we just finished actually earlier today when we finished level 170. Now, World 2 started all the way back at level 81 in the episode Bubblegum Bridge, where we were introduced to Licorice Twirls. They were blockers that are quite easy to remove. You can even switch them with other candies, but they will block the effects of any specials like striped candies that you try and set off. So a striped candy will remove one licorice twirl that will be stopped and won't have any effect on the rest of the candies past it in that row or column. We were introduced to them at level 81, a level which had been buffed from its original version. And we went all the way through this episode past several hard levels, level 86, even a glitch that occurred to me in recording for level 87, level 92, which is the very first level in the entire game, rated very hard, and quite a fun time making a double color bomb combo in level 93. Then we moved up to a little bit more difficult of a new element in the episode Salty Canyon. The ticking time bomb, or candy bomb. It's the normal color of a candy, but it looks like a little bomb with a fuse on the top of it, and a timer counting down. Not an amount of time, but a number of moves. Every time you make a move, the timer ticks down closer to zero by one. If you can't remove the bomb by matching it with two other of the same color, or hitting it with a special, the bomb will explode and end the level instantly. The good thing about taking time bombs is they give you 3,000 points apiece, and if you can match the color of one with a color bomb, you can get an enormous points boost. Pretty much every level except 98, 106, 107, 108, and 109, other than those levels, every level in the episode Salty Canyon was changed, buffed, updated in some way. So once we finish that, uh, by the way, we had some more points levels, and we haven't seen them in a while. Once we finished Salty Canyon, we moved on to the episode Peppermint Palace, which is so tall I can't fit it on. I can only go up to 124. But here we were introduced to frosting, and not typical meringue frosting, but frosting that can be one and two layers thick and has a different appearance. Two-layer thick frosting is white material, and... The uh, one layer thick frosting, or sachet, is just a silver material with a rippled edge that looks a bit like tin foil. Jelly can be, neat, uh, can be underneath frosting, and every strike against it removes one layer until it's gone completely. Now, in this video I'm also going to be telling you the best sugar drop level and my favorite level, because... Um, I showed you how to collect a lot of sugar drops in this level from before. So the best sugar drop level in world number two was level 112. After you remove the frosting, it becomes pretty easy to bring the ingredients down. And with an open board and five colors, it's very easy to create cascades, which in turn create sugar drops, allowing you to then collect them and get your free boosters. So there's not going to be a separate video covering what's the best sugar drop level? I'm telling you now, 112 is the best sugar track level. Then we went up through um, some more tricky levels, level 125, the second level in the game to be rated very hard. And then we were introduced to an entirely new type of level in the episode Wafer Wharf, the candy order level. In this kind of level, you have to collect a certain number of colors of a candy, special candies, or special candy combinations. Starting at level 126, which also is a sugar track level, we had to collect candy colors, red and green, yellow and purple, which had a pretty unique situation in 127 if you saw that video. 128, we had to collect red candies, and for the first time, striped candies. 129 was special in the fact that it's one of only two boards in the game that does not populate any new candy from the top. So, um, kind of tricky there because you could fail because of no more possible switches. Then in level 130 was the first level we were required to collect striped candy matched with other striped candies, or a combination. 
Striped candies by themselves don't count. You have to get the combination in order to fulfill the order. Then we dealt with some more hard levels, including level 133, which is another very hard level. But I must say, it is very satisfying when you beat a hard level. If you play Candy Crush, you know that feeling. If you're stuck on a level and you outsmart it, you beat it, or you just get enough luck to beat it, it feels very good. Then we continue on through the game, past Wafer Wharf, and on to Gingerbread Glade, where the frosting was increased in intensity when we added an extra brown layer on top of it, making it three layers thick. So we needed to strike it three times in order for it to go away. We also had an interesting strand of levels where we have every single type of level in alphabetical order. C for candy order, 141. I for ingredients, 142. J for jelly, 143. M for moves, 144. And T for time, 145. Along with a few more tricky levels, 147, 150, uh, 49, 152, and 153, which is the first level that requires us to make a double color bomb combo. It's pretty tough, but it's a pretty fun if you can manage it. And then we went into the final episode of the game. Um, pardon me, no, not the game. The final episode of this world, Pastel Pyramid. We were introduced to chocolate spawners at level 156, which you cannot remove in any way. They're on the board and they're going to stay for the entire game. A chocolate spawner will spawn a chocolate tile onto the board once every other move. The chocolate then can grow and will behave like a normal chocolate. The problem with the chocolate spawner is even if you remove all the chocolate from the board, as long as the chocolate spawner is active, you will get more chocolate throughout the game. So, a chocolate spawner can be kind of annoying, especially since you can't get rid of it anyway. So then we worked our way through some more tricky levels. Level 158 used to be a hard level. I really still think it is, but it's not rated that anymore. 165, which I got quite a bit of luck on just my second playthrough when recording it, but I think that's one of the toughest levels in this world. Along with some candy combinations, at level 169, which make it pretty difficult. And we closed off the world at level 170, which had quite a few of the types of blockers we were introduced to so far, so it provided a specific element of difficulty. So those are the levels we have covered so far, along with some of the more memorable ones and the new elements. And before I finish, I'm going to go down and tell you what is my favorite level for this world. And I mentioned this before, my favorite level in this world is level 140. Now, I'm not going to play it all the way through. I'm just going to give you the start of it like I did before. But it's my favorite level because it's the only classic Candy Crush level. 9x9 nine nine grid, 6 colors, no blockers. We had 50 moves to collect 99 red, orange, and yellow candies. And that's the other reason it's my favorite, because those are my three favorite colors. Since we have to collect so much candy, the strategy for this level is trying to create as many specials as possible so you can create a great deal of chaos and get 99 of each color to show up from the top so that you can collect it. With no blockers in the way at all, if you get a fair deal of luck on this level, you can just kind of experiment. See how good you are at creating these color bombs, and then once you make one, it becomes a lot easier to make more. Even if you don't take out your target color, just by taking out a color like purple, you can concentrate the colors, making it easier to make more specials. So I'm probably going to play this out a few more moves, show you what you would do. Sometimes you don't always get the luck that you need to create enough chaos, but when you do, this level can be really fun. Alright, see, when I'm making one move, everything else is sending itself off, creating a lot of chaos getting a lot more cycling through of the candy so I can get more to show up for me to collect it. All right, so this is the general strategy for this level. I've already played it through once, and I caused quite a bit of chaos on this board, so I'm going to finish off by pressing the Quit button. Yeah, I know I'm going to lose a life, but I don't need to play any more levels anytime soon for recording, so um, I don't really mind. 
All right, so level 140 is my favorite level for those reasons. Some of my least favorite levels in this world have got to be, let's see here, what would be my least favorite levels in this world? Probably level, uh, I would say 99, it's updated version. What you see here is not the updated version, this is the old version, but the updated version has gaps in the board and chocolate licorice frosting and not very high scoring. So 99 is a level I don't really like. Level 107 is really tricky because you have 50 moves, but you really can only use 9 of them unless you can deal with both of the licorice locked time bombs. And I would say that another level that would be at the bottom of my list would probably be level 157. And I definitely said it quite a few times in the video for level 157. That's probably one of the most boring levels in the entire game. You only have to collect 25 yellow and green, but it's not a very high scoring level. You have a chocolate spawner, six colors, gaps in the board. It's just not a very chaotic, fun level, so I don't like that one very much. On the other hand, along with 140, some of the other levels that I like are actually level 169. Even though that's a tough one, it's kind of fun to see how skilled you are in how you can get the candies or the special candies to line up. If you can, it's really good and really rewarding. And I think the other one of the levels in this world has got to be my new favorite added to the list is level 128. Not necessarily because of the playthrough. I mean, it is a sugar track level, which is kind of nice. But level 128 is one of my new favorites because I introduced uh, player CC21 to the Professor CC19 class in that video. So I had a really great time playing and doing that walkthrough video with her. And I am happy to announce that very soon at level 183, pr player CC21 is going to come back with me and record that level. So Level 183, she and I are going to be doing that walkthrough video together, and I'm really looking forward to it. So that's our progress through World 2. Those are some of my favorite and least favorite levels, and that is the best sugar track level in this world, level 112. So, World 2 is complete, and we're now about to move on to World 3. This is what's going to be in store for us. Um, where's my mouse? All right, there it is. Cupcake Circus, Caramel Cove, Sweet Surprise, Crunchy Castle, Chocolate Barn, my mother would love that one, and Delicious Drifts. That's what's in store for us in World 3. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe if you find my videos helpful to you or enjoyable to watch. Again, if you are ever stuck on any level of the game, please leave a comment in any one of my videos. I will try and help you with that level and help you to further your progress in Candy Crush Saga. Let's move down to the bottom here, back to Cupcake Circus, and that's where we're going to be starting very soon, level 171. That's World 3, that's what's coming soon. Thanks so much for watching.